Hello everybody, in this Excel Beast Mode video, I'll share with you some excellent Excel data analysis tricks. Tricks which are easy to apply and enough for your audience to go wow. Let's begin. In this example of data analysis, I've taken a data set which spans over 8,500 plus rows. The data set consists of date, time element and the electricity unit consumed. With this data, we will have to prepare an extensive analysis which will cover the month and the day and based on that, how much electricity has been consumed. We'll also add a user interface which will allow you to track the consumption based on time. And with this data set, you can quickly make charts like these and these. So let us get started. First, let's extract the important information from the column A. The first piece of information I want is the electricity units consumed. I copy 0 0.384, I paste it in the adjoining cell so that there is no empty blank column in between. Now press Ctrl E. Wow, you will see all the data getting extracted beautifully in this column B. Now you're going to ask me what is Ctrl E? Well, it's a technique called flash fill, which is present under data tab of Excel version 2013. Its strategy is based on training the machine. If you could show one sample output, you are in a way have trained the machine. And with that shortcut key control E, the machine did the task for you. Let me try this with date. I will extract 24th March 2014, copy that, paste in the adjoining cell which is connected and then press control E. The results although very good, but is not perfect. So what do I do? I choose column C, I press control shift three. This ensures all the dates which look like number gets shown as date format. Furthermore, I will get rid of all the underscore and the RDs and the TH, which prevents Excel to read this as date. You can easily apply find and replace by pressing control H. I put an underscore and replace with nothing. I can quickly click on replace all button or I may press alt with letter A, alt A, enter, next, ST, replace all, next, ND, replace all, next, RD, replace all, finally, TH, replace all. I'll close this panel now. Next, if I wish to find out which of these are Sundays or Mondays, I may write a function called text. Text formula asks you to choose the date value and then in the format you have to give three times D in a pair of double quotes. Enter. The text formula will help me get answers for all the dates. So I've got KWH, I've got the date in place, I have got the day in place. Now, if I want time, what next? I try picking 3 p.m., copying that, pasting in the cell which is connected in the same row and then pressing Ctrl E. However, this will not yield you correct results with respect to time. Reason? As you pasted 3 p.m., its format got changed and became more elaborate. You can see in the function bar, 3 colon 00 colon 00, 00 space p.m. This sample with which you are trying to train the machine is not the same as input, hence the confusion. So let me put a single quote, 3, and then space, followed by PM. This ensures that the time will be stored as text. Now with this sample, I press Ctrl E and get the results. Although the results are very encouraging and accurate, however, it's not clean enough. I should have trained the machine better with example of 8 PM. Reason? because this case has problems of underscore and lack of space. So I go back. I put single quote, 8 space PM, enter, and then using 8 PM as benchmark, control E. Superb. If you have a concern that this time is being read as text, you may apply a function called value. Any number stored as text, any date stored as text, or any time stored as text will be converted into a proper format. Let me choose the time, Close the parenthesis, enter. I will select the value and press Ctrl Shift 2 to make it look like time. There you go, you got your results. I'll keep a heading of time version 2. 
with all this important information pieces right in front of you, you are all ready to move on to the next step of data analysis. I select the data using shift control down. I go to insert. I activate pivot table and I simply press OK. Next, to draw the full benefit of pivot table, I will activate a setting from pivot table options. I click on it. I go to display tab and then I activate classic layout option. OK, now the four grids are very clear. The biggest of them all, which is value fields, is generally used for calculations such as max, min, average, percentage. Let me put date in the row fields. You can put the date in the row fields by dragging and dropping in the section at the bottom also. You can also make a tick mark. Now when you right click on any one date, you get an option called group. You click on group and choose months. What is this going to do? It's going to group the dates into clusters of month. Next time you can try with grouping dates with months and years both. Right now I'm more keen to put day in the column field. And I want to rearrange the sequence of these days from Monday to Sunday. So I right click on Sunday. I go to option move. I then choose move Sunday to end. Now let me fill this value grid area with KWH. That's the electricity units consumed. Once having chosen all the numbers, I press Ctrl Shift 1 to correct the format with two decimals. The analysis shows the total consumption during the entire year was 6849. Now when I choose all the information pieces from the grid, excluding the grand totals, I can go to Home tab, go to Conditional Formatting, reach out towards Color Scales and choose the Heat Map option, which is the eighth one. Next, I wish to show a small chart against every month. So I select the cell, I go to insert and then I go to spark lines. This is a feature of 2010 version of Excel and click on the line option. All it asks me is to choose the data range, which I gladly do so from Monday to Sunday. Do remember no grand totals to be taken else your chart will be misrepresenting the data. Press OK. Once the spark line is in place, you can modify the settings by going to design and choose high point and low point. Furthermore, you can drag this down to have the same for all months. Next, I choose any cell from inside the pivot table and then I go to analyze. Within analyze, I choose insert slicer. It was introduced in the version 2010 of Excel. Let me choose slicer and then I will take up the version time 2. Okay. It provides me with a simple user interface panel which I can drag towards the right. And this will control the pivot table display on the left. Let me try it out. If I choose one o'clock or five o'clock, you can see the difference. I can also clear the filter from the slicer. If you want to make a quick chart based out of this data, simply select a cell from inside the pivot table and press function key F11. Whoa, if that's not all, you can also modify the chart by right clicking on the bar and go to chain series chart type. Once you click on it, you can decide to choose which chart would you want to apply on your data set. There you go. Press OK. This chart quickly tells me that July is the month of highest consumption followed by January, June and thereafter December. Before I conclude, let me show you the best trick of the day. Why don't I keep the time version one in the report filter? And if somebody asks me to make 24 hours report individual reports in different sheets, I'm not going to use this technique. I'll go to analyze. I'll find out where the option is and then click on the drop down. And finally, I find this option which I'm going to use. Show report filter pages. Let me click on it and press OK. And in one second, you'll have 24 sheets generated, one for every time zone. Let me go back to my original pivot table by right clicking at the bottom left corner of the screen, scroll down and choose sheet one. It's time for a quick wrap up of this Excel beast mode video. In this video, you learned how to do data analysis in Excel. We used various strategies and tricks. One of my favorite tricks is flash fill, which is a new feature of Excel version 2013. Others include pivot tables, spark lines and heat map through conditional formatting. Apply these learning to your job and become faster, save time and bring efficiency.